you rule. Gone. Gone. 2009, 8.9 million was agreed, but only 6.264 million was disbursed. Another 3 point something million gone. 2010, 9.3 million was agreed, but only 3.255 million euros was disbursed. 2011, 2011, 12.35 million euros was agreed. Only 7.41 million euros was disbursed. 2012, 18.56 million euros was agreed and disbursed. 2013, 16.1 million euros was agreed, but only 12.884 million was disbursed. And 2016, which should have been 2014, 20.74 million euros was agreed, but only 17.524 million euros was disbursed. In the aggregate, 112.879 million euros was agreed, but only 81.385 million euros was disbursed. So, Gaisuko lost critical funding in excess of 30 million euros. You must know this. Yes. This cry of babies today. Come in here and use indigenous workers for their own ends. Yes. But they would not tell you what is the story. So now you know why when the government came in in May 2015, the man who was getting 35,000 US dollars a month, he dropped it. And he run and he say, yeah, I'll take it. Drop it. Drop it and go on. That same week, that same week, sugar workers would not have been paid hadn't it been for this government who came in with all the problems that we came in and met. We had to find money to pay to give to Gaisuku to pay those workers for that week and that month. From day one. one. These people who come here, here, and pretend that they have the sugar workers' interests at heart. And they talk about fat cats and 50% pay to 50% pay to 13. Not 13, it's everybody. But they were paying one man 35,000 US. While Gaisuko was going down and can't even meet its own variable targets and losing 30 million euros over the years, the ordinary sugar worker was being used and abused. 12 million, 12 billion dollars we have to find. And from since that day, there has been no let up. We must know these stories, man, because we get beaten, we get licks and all kind of thing because these people are able to get the press. They have their own and they have their sympathizers and they run with these stories, these, these top, top figures. Nobody do the homework. We have all the figures. You could come and get it whenever you want it. If you're honesty and true to yourself. This wouldn't appear tomorrow in the other times, I know. But at least some news, it will find its way in. Let the people out there know that it's crocodile tears. They don't have the interest of sugar workers. They want to be sure that they can vote for them in 2020. That's all. They don't have the interest of the sugar workers in, 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 in hand. And the workers themselves must not be fooled. This government has pumped $12 billion in 2015, $11 billion in 2016. Nine billion dollars in 2017 for a total of 32 billion. In addition, in 2017, we have facilitated CHMPA buying two billion dollars worth of land. So that's 11 billion, and we have just signed on to the guarantee for them to go to a bank to get 2.5 billion dollars more to carry them to the end of the year. Nothing is going on in Gaisuko. Nothing is going on in Gaisuko. So for this year alone, 
When Gaisuko is going to produce maybe even less than 150, but we're holding with breath. We're hoping it's 150 because we don't want damage the growth rate too much more. When they are going to produce 150,000 tons or thereabouts, they take collectively from the Treasury and related allied Treasury matter because the guarantee that we gave today to the bank is we're going to have to find the $2.5 billion to pay the bank. We're just buying time, as they say. So for this year, 2017, a total of $13.5 billion would have been transferred to Gaisuku. At a time when they're producing the lowest amount of sugar since we came into office. Since we came into office. We don't cry. We, we, we stick to our guns and we proceed. And they were gleeful, or they appeared so. Let me pull it back. They appeared gleeful when the market in Venezuela was lost for the premium, premium rice. We were told, go and negotiate with these people. The people who told us when we went there, and we had in our company Mr. De Silva, who was the ambassador. We had in our company Mr. Rajnarain, who was the GRDB general manager. And in our company was Ms. Donna Yearwood. And they all are there as witnesses. When two high ranking, the head of Pedavesa, and the, and, and the other, other person for Petrocarry everything or something, told us in no certain term, said, Mr. Minister, you know, say so on. But we told the last people who were here, we do not want any more rice from Guyana. They said so. And the name both of them, one of them was Ms. Caroline Rodriguez. The other one was Mr. Leslie Ramsamy. They, 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 they tried. But the Venezuela said, uh, you know, and they gave me a nice statue of Chavez and sent me on my way. I came back, I reported. But these people continue to bring this false thing to this house. Same but how we lose rice market. And I see Kaito News, the people in Tom and all them, with this thing, but we lose rice market and we must go and negotiate with Venezuela. Let me ask you something. They say patriotism is the last refuge of a scoundrel. Don't we have, don't we have enough scoundrels in this country? Where has our patriotism gone? Where? Maybe we should begin to question how this sweetheart deal came out of the blues. Maybe we should begin to question. Because look carefully, as soon as this government came in, the poll it died. It died. And left a whole set of farmers in the lurch. Again, to the rescue, this young three month, two month old government. We had to find billions of dollars, billions of dollars to rescue the rice farmers. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe even up to this day, they may have rice rotting on the wharf. Those poor farmers, they abrogated the deal even before, the existing deal abrogated even before it came to an end. That's how bad. And we were told, go talk to the people to get back the rice market. Where's our sense of patriotism? Where? Where? But today, we have been able to recover. We have been able to recover. Markets in Mexico, markets in Panama, markets in Cuba. In fact, one, Mr. Nan Posad, I believe, is actually billing a mill in Cuba. That's where we are today. And we salute all the rice farmers. Again, a lot of people claiming that they're on your side, but it's this government who proved to you that we have your interest at heart. Watch with me one more hour.
We will get there. We will get there. So, Miss. So, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, we don't, we don't sit idly by twiddling our thumbs and mindlessly wondering what is, the honorable, uh, honorable opposition leader will be coming next. We don't have time for that. And this is all part of a process of reconfiguring the estimates into a more friendly estimates. I watch all y'all, including our people on our side. After, but it done, I can't find the estimates in anybody's desk. So we don't want that anymore. We want the estimates to be there on your desk and you're consulting it all through the year, not just during budget time. All right. So to do that, we're trying to make the estimates a bit more friendly. We realize it's a bit, it's a bit you know, heavy going, heavy going, you know. So we're trying to remove from this estimate tables that we consider not to be germane to the passage of the estimates. Now, how can we hide the consolidated fund balance? You can call back the it's not, it's not, it's not state secret. And just like all you could procure the letter, you could procure the balance from the consul fund. And the Arjun don't make joke in, in putting it out there. And the consolidated fund balance is in for the deficit and so on. It's there. It's your right. It's your right to inspect it. We can't hide it from you. Who's was this big noise you think? That's all you could do to come here and waste time talking about two tables missing from, from thing, two inconsequential tables? You want the consult fund budget? Call the governor tomorrow and he will give you, call the finance secretary and he will give you the consult fund deficit. He don't know it. We don't hide anything. These are public accounts. They are public records. If you have a problem getting it, you call my office and I will get it, make sure that get done. We don't hide anything. It's out there. You want to know how much the end of the Ministry of Legal Affairs account? Call us if they don't want to give you. These are public records. They're not to be hidden. This is not the PPPC government. When you had to call the office of the president, to get rainfall data out of the, the hydrometeorological office, I'm telling you, it's true. You, one time you have to call the office of the president to get hydromet data. The people were so scared to give you the information. This was top secret information to know whether it's going to rain tomorrow or not. Unbelievable, but true. So we don't have anything to hide. You want the consult fund balance? It's right there. By Monday, if you want it, I'll bring it to the house and give it to you. It's right there. You call up the governor, you call up the finance secretary, and said here, the minister said in parliament that you can get it. You get it. So we don't have to hide anything and come in here wasting time on talking about two tables disappear from the estimates. Non-German tables disappear from here, so you make it a big noise over it. He talks about the deficit of the central government increasing. Well, we didn't hide it either. But wait a minute. The deficit of the central government increasing? It's which deficit are you talking about? It's which deficit the honorable member is speaking about? And then I look back again. He's talking about the nominal deficit. All right, the nominal deficit in increasing. But any economist worth his or her salt will tell you that figure is misleading. What you have to do to compare is the relative deficit. It's the relative deficit. That's the nominal divided by your GDP in the current year. Nominal. That will give you the deficit GDP ratio. And that will give you an indication as to whether your finances are deteriorating or not. Because it may be expected that if your GDP is growing, you were able to maybe borrow a little bit more to expand the economy. So you incur a bigger deficit today for a bigger expansion tomorrow. It is simple. We're not hiding that the nominal deficit may be growing. That is fine. 
as long as the relative for comparison purposes are within the ballpark. But notice he didn't jump up and say, what's the relative deficit? Well, maybe he didn't even know. You see? All my students ask the minister, honorable member of legal affairs. He will tell you how I teach. And then he talks, the honorable member spoke about the debt, the debt, the debt. And he talked about the debt. He admitted that the debt had declined. Admitted that the debt had declined. Went back to only good Lord knows when, 1980 something, and said about 900%. It's in some affidavit by honorable member Greenwich. Yeah, yeah well, 900 and something percent. And I ordered, I ordered in 2014, and I was checking through the, um, the, 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 the Hansard and so on. It's probably in 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, and we don't know. You could write it down 2019 and 2020. It will come back again. 900 and something percent. Yeah. Honorable member, Honorable Member Greenwich said it was 900 and something percent, but that his government brought it down to, to, to whatever it is. Look, I'm not going to go back till you. What I do know, it was around 48% when we entered in 2015, right? 48% of GDP, roughly around there. And today, it's 45. So that's a step. Now, we, now the honorable member said, all right, all right, all right. It come down, all right, you know, 900 something to 48. But you take the 45. But here, no, don't take the 45 yet. It only is 45 because of cancellation of promissory notes on the Petrocari. Oh, you like that one? Yeah. Oh, you like that one? Well, I will tell you this much. The Petro Caribbean, this is how it should have worked. Let us say the oil costs one US dollar. Let us say the price at which oil is suggests that the ratio that will kick in is that you will pay $40, $0.40, cents, and $0.60 cents will go into the Petro-Caribbean fund. But the ratio can change depending on the price of the oil, right? There are different ratios. But let's stick to the one. So $0.60 cents is in the Petro-Caribbean fund. Every postings, I think they call it, every time a shipment lands here, it lands at a different price or combination, depending on what's the world market price. And so these monies are going in to this fund. Every landing is a new contract. And the contract is standard. I think it's 12 years? 12 years? 20 years. 25 years. How much grace? 25 years, three years grace. Two years grace. So, so be careful here. A landing come today, in other words, a boat comes, goes to Venezuela, picks up fuel, comes to Guyana. That's a landing. Okay, when it lands here, you pay 40 to Venezuela, 60 go into the fund. That contract now, you sign, promissory note, 25 years, two years grace. You with me? Good. Next week, a boat goes over, comes back. Let me stay with 40 and 60. 60 gone into the account. Another contract is formed, promissory note, 25 years. And so this thing will continue. Every time a landing comes, you get a new contract. And it's 25 years with two years grace. So two things are happening here. The debt is being pushed forward and forward down. Right? Kick it down the road. Right? And two, and two, you have what you call a sinking fund created. That this fund here now, when the debt becomes due, when one of the promissory notes, first payment becomes due on a promissory note, you can go into this fund, act like a sinking fund, and pay the debt. But meanwhile, you could get a little raise. You could get a little raise by going and invest this accumulated balance somewhere, and you could cream off. 
You could cream off that amount and use it for developmental purposes. You with me? Good. Guess what happened? A deal was consummated for rice with, with Venezuela. It was a, if you want to call it a bar to deal. I pay you rice, you write, we write down the debt. So, if in a whole year I sell Venezuela 110 million US dollars of rice, the debt is written down by 110 million US dollars in one shot. So all the 25 years that you had going way, way, way down, gone down the drain. Gone right down the drain. All gone down the drain. So you get no benefit from the petro -carib. The benefit you get, perhaps, is selling the rice. All right? It's selling the rice. But the debt. Now, this could not continue. Because when you, by the time we got into office, with all of these shenanigans that took place, oh, money is going to some place here, GPL, and all these different places. The fund was empty. The fund would have been empty anyhow under that kind of arrangement. Because as the prices got lower, the, 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 the split yes. is less in your favor. Mm -hmm. So the accumulations in the fund will be slower mm -hmm. than when the prices are high. So how could the fund have survived? How would it have survived? So that when we came into power in 2015, the fund was dead. Let's look at a historical series of growth, growth rates here. In 2007, the growth forecast was 4.9, and the growth realized was 7.2, which appeared to be uh, the, best, the best year of the, of the uh, PBP civic government, because the growth that came in 1993 was as a result of the growth that was picked up from 91 and 92. Because 91 was 6.1%, 92 was 7.9%, and I think 93 was 8.2%. And that was picking up from the ERP. Yeah. From there on, there was a flat line. A flat line that was coming down, coming down, coming down. And, and the honorable member should put his record as the Minister of Finance in growth, not as president or something, his record. Let's one of us could line up the record and see what it, what, it, what it would have said. In 2008, they had a projection, a forecast of 4.8% in growth, but only realized 1.8. 1.8. 1 You're talking about uh, 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 projections being off? How you can project 4.8 and end up with 1.8? 1 yeah. No, I'm not knocking. I'm not knocking. I'm not knocking because that is how economies stay. We try to be conservative in the projections and then something comes in and knock you off your feet. 2009, projected 4.7, ended up with 3.6. 2010, projected 4.4, ended up with 4.1. 2011, projected 4.6, ended up with 5.2. 2012, projected 4.1, ended up with 5.3. 2013, projected 5.3, ended up with 5. And 2014, when this slide started, I want people to think that this slide started on this government, just like how they inherited an upswing in 92, we inherited a downswing in 2015. 2014, they projected a 5.6% growth rate but only got 3.9. And as you know, 2015, we got 3.1, I think it's 3.1 or 3. 2016 was 3.4, and 2017, 2.9. And you check and see what's the reason why we got a 2.9, not a 3.8. And it's almost exclusively Gaisuko. In the low target that we gave Gaisuko, even the low target of 187, I think, or something like that. Kaisuko ends up at 150. And then you're, 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 you're trying to 
you, you know, you're trying to beat me down on, on a growth rate of 2.9. I am happy that other sectors stepped up and did not allow the slide into negativity. You have caliber countries that are senior to us in terms of income going through serious crises. Suriname, Trinidad, Barbados, endemic growth in Jamaica, point something percent. Bahamas got the troubles, just come from there. And you are scoffing at my 2.9 and saying, oh, economy declining. There's a reason why the economy declining. The economy for 50 years, despite all the hot air and the talk, depends on either the mineral sector or the agri-sector or both for performance. You know, diversification here. Here we talk about services, 50% of the economy. These aren't the services what Rusto and all these people were talking about. We're not selling any services to the economy. When they were talking about uh, uh, moving to a service economy, they're talking about the United States, all these high-end services they're selling. we selling, buying, and selling here. That's what we're making up our services, buying and selling. And that's why the main prime wood importer are up in arms, because we put in a 40% um, CET, right? So we know why it's 2.9. We had projected 3.8, because if, if sugar came in at the 180, or thereabouts, we, we, you know, we'd have been in, in ghoul, as they say. So don't come to us and say, oh, it's mismanagement of the economy and some sort of thing. We know what is sugar. What do you want to do? Go beat up sugar? We can't go beat up sugar. We know what's the crisis in sugar, but we had hope that they were coming at the 180. We, want, we, we, didn't, we didn't even, you know, while the dreams think that they could, they could do 150, and even while the dreams that they could do 115 in 2018. 115. And the outlook is so dim, that by 2020, they're going to do 147. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, if it weren't so painful, you'll laugh, you know. So that is the reality. But, but by then, by then, even without oil, even without oil, we should have been able to make some inroads into diversification. And, and Mrs. Speaker, I want, as, as I remember this point, let me make it right now. I heard a lot of scoff by the honorable member, not necessarily here, but outside, scoffing about this is a planting chip, planting chip economy, <clears throat> laughing at these small people, you know, as if an economy is built on skyscrapers and so on. But, Mr. Speaker, we said our emphasis is on small businesses. Yeah. And whether it's the South lady, the black pudding lady, the, the, the planting chip, the pillory, the bar, or whatever, we have to nurture these businesses. We are laughing, but listen, listen, Mr. Speaker, do you know that roti from Suriname is coming to this country? Doubles from Trinidad? Chick, chick, peas. Chick chick peas is coming from Trinidad. Yes. Sugar cake is coming from the islands. This is unbelievable, Mr. Speaker. And we are laughing and scoffing at the planting chip. But listen to this, Mr. Speaker. If 1,000 small businesses employ five people, that's 5,000 jobs. If you bring a Walmart here, how much jobs are you going to bring you? How much? You bring, you, you bring, you bring, what's your name? Bai Shanling? Bai Shanling? You bring Bai Shanling. You give them all the concessions in the world. All! How many jobs did they bring? How many? How many jobs you gave away the house and everything in concessions and we have the records? You gave away everything. How many did they bring? Vaitana is here. How many jobs did they bring? And whoever else is here? How many jobs? Small businesses got the potential to solve our unemployment problems. 
And that is why when you look into the budget, there are a number of programs targeting small businesses. And we of our own now have gone and put in 100 million on the small business fund. We've upped the SLED program from 100 to 150 million. We've increased the youth employment initiative. Here's people are getting better and better. I saw some of the products that they're doing. And as you walk around this country and you look at the demonstration, the exhibitions and so on, it tells you that we are back on the road to becoming a manufacturing. And we have to, we have to nurture this. We have to nurture this. We have to promote it. Not only at the exhibition, but we must be able to move these people away from just exhibits to commercial production. And I think that is the next step that they are waiting on. And we have to help them. Right? They, we threw out the baby with the bathwater with the things that were done in the 70s. But I think we could learn a number of things that were done in the 70s. The GMCs that used to go around and buy the people's uh, um, thing. We used to do ham and bacon. GMCs yeah. do ham and bacon and all these different things. We need to get back into that mold where we feel proud and we eat our local stuff. Eat our local stuff. And I don't want to hear anything more <clears throat> about the, 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 our national airport selling water from Jamaica. I don't care how we are CARICOM brothers, we must be our brothers and keepers force. 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 A shame that you could walk in a store in Guyana at your international airport and cannot even find one bottle of, of, of local water in the land of many waters. Can you believe it? But this is reality, Mr. Speaker. And we have to move from the talk, move from the talk into the walk. And those very people who like talking a lot invite me to all kinds of, 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 of things. Come and open here, make speech here, and all kinds of things. And you look right there, right there where they ask you to open speech and write, make speech and all kinds of things. All the things are foreign, 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 foreign. You can get nothing local, nothing local. And they come and invite you to tell you this and that. And I'm not joking. The biggest pine wood importer here is upset. Is upset because we've put a restriction on it. And we've gone and put in the CET 40%. You can't serve two masters. That's right. You can't serve two masters. You want to serve the private sector at the same time you don't want our local things get ahead. Well, we are for local. Yes. We are for yes. local. Yes. We are for local. Two, quick, two or three quick more points, Mr. Speaker. The external debt. He says, Honorable Member by Jack Doe says, the external debt is projected to increase. <laughs> is this for real? You know, I mean, is this really for real? No, the external debt is projected to increase. Is the external debt projected to decline? Well, without, let us assume away the oil. Let us assume away the oil. When you look at the economy of Guyana, when you look at the economy of Guyana, the basic infrastructure is still missing. <clears throat> Most of our money is spent on infrastructure, and we're still trying to get there. We, we don't have the PPP structure in place that will give us the kind of return that we're looking for. The two attempts that we made at PPP have gone all right. The Barbies Bridge and the Marriott. Gone right. And there aren't models that sell themselves for future PPPs. So we are putting together PPP with the Caribbean Development Bank. We have a, a, a more or less a finalized version that will be going to the cabinet soon for discussion. And hopefully we can get it into this house um, in, par in Parliament here to debate it and, and, and uh, let's, uh, let's ad 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 adopt it. In the, meanwhile, in the meanwhile, we depend heavily on our multilateral uh, partners to help us with infrastructure. Well, we are a small country in terms of economy, but big in terms of size. But they don't have size and importance. They look at the economy. And therefore, we could only get so much in borrowing, only so much. But our needs are so much. So 
On this journey, we have to take that proverbial step. Well, that leaps until the handmaiden steps in. Now, people say, oh, you're depending on that and so on. But my, my friend, that is the best thing ever happened to Ghana since sugar come to this country. And we, 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 it's ours. We don't can't be ashamed. What are we ashamed of? What are we ashamed of? And everybody is coming for it. But we said we would be using these resources to diversify this economy. Food is important. Everybody wants food. So our agricultural sector will continue to play a big part in this country. And we're working with a multilateral partner to develop an industrial policy. So we have our heads on. We have our heads. We hear these stories, but we're tired of hearing too many exports coming around here, telling me this, telling me that, and so on. We've heard all these stories, and so on. We're trying to put them together. But please, let us breathe. Let us breathe a little bit. Before you could even take two breaths, another one come in and tell you, oh God, something here gonna happen and so on. Let us breathe, so to speak, you know. We understand all the traps and so on. We don't say we're not gonna fall into one, two. That's human, but we are clear in terms of, and that's why the faster this green state strategy could finish, it would be the better for us. You know why? Because all the people who wash in the mouth, on us. Oh, we ain't got a strategy, we ain't got a plan, we ain't got this. Even though in 2015, but in 2016, but in 2017, but in 2018 budget, they're all common threads coming right through of what our vision is, what our strategy is, what our plans, programs, and policies are. But you get it. And then they have their fellow travelers in the other areas who come out. Oh, um, doesn't, but it doesn't uh, have a vision for employment and the youth and no, no long-term vision and plan and so on. All these things, you could go some textbook or have the internet and pull and you write and you make statement. But it don't help us. Because, Mr. Speaker, if plans and strategies were symptomatic of your stage of development, we will be an upper class country. We got more plans and strategies in this country than anybody in the Caribbean. And look where we are. We had two good plans in this country, the FCH being one of them, perhaps the most progressive. And we had a range of strategies under the 23 years. I got one for you. Now, when the government came, the power 92, as you recall. I don't think they realized they would have won an election because, as I recall at that time, most people were going with the PNC until Russia happened, glass nose and all these things, and people start falling off and realize things happened. Long or short is, government came to power. But they didn't realize they would have come to power. They had no plan. They had no plan. What Mr. Carto thought, and his center thought, that they could make Guyana and another country, I can't remember which one was the one in Africa, because I was there and I helped out. Um, he thought he could make Guyana a model country. And so he sent down his team and so on, and he helped us together with a whole range of people here in Guyana, honor something people, put together what is called the National Development Strategy. National Development Strategy. When it came out, it came out, I think, in seven volumes, six plus um, a summary volume. And they were nice green. I don't know why they hate green. Mm -hmm. All these things were green and yellow. AFC. They knew, they knew, they knew, they knew that they were coming from since then. They were green, green border, and yellow in the middle. Right? Six and one. The, the minister at the time was Honorable Bar Jagdeo, finance minister. First thing is, who oh God, all these documents, nobody can read it. So Carter said, all right. So under the auspices of the late Dr. Kerry King, they sat down to revise, to revise the document into a single document. All right? OK. Well, everybody knows the story. The story is out. I used to write budget speeches during that time for the, for the then government. Mr. Speaker, every time I attempt to write the opening and put, just like this circle here, where the people should consult, 
to get the government's vision and policies and so on. Every time I attempted to put down national development strategy, the honorable will scratch it out. I said, oh, but this is, this is the government's premier document. He said, no, 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 put no national development strategy. I said, why? He said, well, the strategy got some things that we don't want to do. I said, like, well, he says, the strategy got that we must privatize sugar. Mm -hmm. This is 19, somewhere around 1996. Right. Oh he said, the strategy got that we must privatize sugar. We will not do that. You will not do that. Every time I attempt to put national development strategy, he will scratch it out. I don't know what he saw, but listen to this, Mr. Speaker. So, the then opposition in their wisdom decided to call the government bluff. And they brought it to the National Assembly. I have the Hansard here. Fifth sitting, December 2006, Mr. Speaker, Hansard. You must do your homework, journalists. Do your homework. Do your homework. At page 96, public business motion, item 9, the national development strategy. This is a motion that I believe that was, let me see who's the in the motion. Honorable member, Mr. Murray. I'll read everything. Everything I'll read. Whereas over 150 members of Guyanese civil society of various walks of life and from fields of endeavor have put forward a national development strategy that details a series of bold economic initiatives and exciting programs geared towards the transformation and diversification of the economy. And whereas among the stated objectives of the national development strategy are attainment of the highest possible rate of economic growth, the alleviation of poverty, the equitable geographic distribution of economic activities and benefits, and the diversification of the economy. And whereas the National Assembly of the 8th Parliament unanimously passes a resolution on the 15th of December 2005 for an update of the national development strategy at the earliest practicable date, be it resolved that this National Assembly accepts the national development strategy and the measures and policies therein as an overarching strategy for pursuing the economic and social transformation of Guyana, be it for the resolve that this National Assembly directs that the national development strategy be placed before a special select parliamentary committee to commence the consultations immediately with the private sector, wider civil society, and other stakeholders to establish a representative cross-sectional group supported by a suitable resource secretariat with access to resource expertise to update the National Development Strategy at the earliest practicable date, be it for the resolve that this National Assembly directs that the representative cross-sectional group reports periodically to the Special Parliamentary Committee and that the finally updated National Development Strategy be submitted to the Special Select Parliamentary Committee to make recommendations to the National Assembly for the consideration and adoption of the said updated National Development Strategy be it for the resolve that subsequent to the adoption of the updated National Development Strategy, this National Assembly authorizes a sectoral committee on economic services to monitor the policies and the implementation of the National Development Strategy by the executive. This National Development Strategy was the government owned, the then PPP civic government. It is the opposition that brought it to this house for national debate and acceptance. Guess what, Mr. Speaker? I'm going forward on, I'm going forward on, going forward on. I'm now, Mr. Speaker, at page 146, after all the debate gone through and so on, and passionate debate by Mr. Maury, Mr. Corbyn, everybody, passionate debate and so on. So I'm now at the, at, at the back of the page now. Uh, okay, question put. Mr. Winston S. Maury, division. The Speaker. The clerk will take the division, please. I'm only going to read against. End of the vote says, I'm going to read all the people just now, but I'm going to get the end of the vote quickly. It says, 
I wish to report that 33 members were against the motion. 33 members were against the motion to adopt the National Development Studies as a national document. 33 were against it. It couldn't have been opposition. And 21 supported the motion. 21 members in the opposition supported the motion to make the national development strategy a national document and update it. It couldn't get through. Sugar is to be privatized. It wasn't going anywhere. So the poor clerk says, or the speaker, the motion is therefore negative. 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 Among the people who voted against their own strategy, Mr. Speaker. Against Mr. Whitaker, Mr. Siraj, Mr. P. Posad, Mr. Neet Kumar, Mr. Nandalal, Mr. Nagamutu. <laughs> Mr. Lumbo, Mr. Khan, Mr. Edwards, Ms. Edwards, Mr. Chan, Mr. Atkinson, Mr. Ali, Ms. Shadik, Mrs. Chandapal, Mr. Nocto, Mr. Shero, Mr. Ramatar, Mr. Prashad, Ms. Webster, Dr. Ramsaran, Dr. Fox, Ms. Manikchan, Mr. Nadir, Mr. Ben, Dr. Anthony, Mr. Lal, Dr. Westford, Mr. Narbat, Mrs. Rodriguez Borkip, Dr. Ramsami, Mr. Bash, Mr. Rohi, Mr. Hines, 33 members, most of whom, most of whom are on the western side. At least the good Lord saved Moses and put him over the eastern side. And he has come to see the light. It's already in the answer. So, so, Mr. Speaker, when you hear these people come to you and say, Oh, they ain't got no strategy, they ain't got no vision, we had an NDS. They had an NDS? It didn't exist. It didn't exist, Mr. Speaker. I tell you, gospel, Lord above me. I work all the time with these people. And the, 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 the formula was, if they ain't got nothing in it for me, I ain't worried with it. NDS, that's a waste of time. Move on to the next strategy, poverty reduction strategy. But that thing in poverty reduction strategy, you know why? Because it was attached to the HIPIC, the highly indebted poor country that allowed significant write-off of your debt. Even for the first time by multilateral agencies, over 200 something million of our multilateral that get written off by, by um, uh, IDB and all these different places, right? IMF, I think, too. Some IMF debts are written off. Yes. CDB wrote off anything? No. Right. But that's it. Then when HIPIC no longer could serve us any useful purposes, we moved on. Next strategy, national competitiveness strategy. Now we get money from the IDB, big loan money to finance this useless project. All kinds of fellow travelers getting paid, all kinds of money doing nothing. And the best thing the private sector could tell me, oh, you know, on the national competitive strategy, we had a council. And uh, it used to be chaired by the president, and we could get to meet the president. My understanding is that one time, one time this meeting was chaired, and they were asking you about this council. We said, listen, man, this thing is not about council and all this kind of thing. As long as we could get an interaction that is positive and so forth, we should go for it. Don't get wedded to council and president and all this kind of story. The president got his minions, his ministers. And ministers got minions, foreign secretaries, and all this kind of thing. We got layers where these things are concerned. And don't believe that you got to go to the president for everything. Of course, you know, in that former regime, the president was king. In this regime, everybody has a little cubby hole that we could call people in. National competitiveness strategy, total waste. Lots of money we got to pay back to the IDB. What is competitive in Guyana? I mean, let's be blunt. What is competitive in Guyana? We couldn't even sell our own constant backside for which we had 90 something percent. What is competitive in Guyana? 
total and useless waste of money. And we've got to pay back this loan. This government got to pay back this loan. Move on. That's a waste of time. The loan money done, done, done this, Boris. Forget it. Now it's legacy time. Legacy time. Low carbon development strategy. Focus, focus. Only this time, this is my legacy because, you see, I'm leaving power. I'm leaving power. So I have to have, a, I have, to have something there. So, hip on the low carbon development strategy. Get an international export. The McKinsey Group come and prepare this strategy and so on. Get the Norwegians to buy in. Get the Norwegians to buy in. And there is it. 250 million US dollars for low carbon development strategy. Deal signed in 2009 for five years. So it means I've got to finish by 2014. So how come the strategy still, how come the Norway still got for this boss in 2017? The same one, not a new program. And if you all remember well, if you read well, you remember there was a lot of tantrums shown by the then president, yes. His Excellency, yes. about the Norwegians. Yes. And they're not disbursing this money. And as the Honorable Joe Harmon indicated to this house a couple of days ago, the 250 soon became 215 because we lost money to a combination exchange rate and not meeting targets. We got this pension for not meeting targets. We lost a whole set of money, 30.1 million euros under the EU program. Now we lose without even a start. We don't lose a set of money and the Norway program. And still, a significant part of the Norway money remains on this bourse up to today. But by then, by, by now, you've already ensconced in climate change and forest this and so on. You're rubbing shoulders with Clinton and, and who else and so on. So, you know, there's them by thing. Except that the low carbon development strategy, hardly, hardly done, wasn't a national development strategy. And in comes in the green state development strategy. And he could course it out as much as he wants. He could criticize it, he could tear it up. The green state development strategy, which is being done with assistance from the United Nations Environmental Program, is meant to be an all-embracing strategy. And within the next 18 months or day about, through a multi-stakeholder process that has been described in the budget, that we don't have to go through again, this strategy, the draft of it, should be a reality. But I'm not saying that the fund gonna stop. They can still claim you got no strategy, or that your strategy is not homegrown. Somebody do for you and so on. But I ain't got no problems if somebody doing something for me. If I don't have the, res the, the resources, the human or otherwise, I will ask people to help me. Yeah. As long as along the way, I own the strategy. Yes. Nobody's walking in my country and telling me the right strategy. That is why you have all these 14 plus multi-stakeholder groups going all around the place, talking to people and many communities in their own language. Now people come in and tell you something and then by the afternoon you're going to make some plane and say we consult with the Amazonians. So in their own language and everything else. This is going to be a properly done strategy because it's important it's coming on the eve of the oil resources, and that is why we have to keep right. So, Mr. Mr. Chairman, this is the last time I'm going to talk about strategies in this house. We're wasting time. And I hope the Hansard and the journalists them take note. All this talk about you and that vision and you and that strategy and all kind of thing. This country is still poor with all the strategies we had. It's still poor. It's still poor. It's still poor, and they love to say how much growth they had in how much five years before they arrived and so on. Where's the evidence? Where's the Tell that to the people in Buxton, who road we now trying to patch and give them a little water. Yeah. Tell them to the people in Victoria, whose houses look like the same time when the slaves bought it. Tell it to those people and see what they tell you. Tell it to Sophia people, who are now seeing what it's like to get a little light Little nice yeah. roads, little water, come home a little late, go to a little party and so on. You couldn't do it in the last time, it's too dark. You're afraid. You're afraid it's two foot to the four foot. 
but now those people can do something. This is what this budget is all about. It's not talking about building skyscrapers and all kind of thing. It's talking about reaching the ordinary individual. Ordinary individual. And I don't know who he spoke to. Of course, I may, I may, I may, I may know who he spoke to because they weren't too shy in coming publicly in their whispers. You know, I must admit openly that I was disappointed with a certain private sector entity because I thought we had formed a round table, work with this entity to the bone, put a whole technical group in place working with them. They identified the force sector for serious and critical analysis being the forestry sector. And everything they requested roads. for the forestry, the we put the in the budget. The, the, the roads, the everything. The, the, the removal of the vat, our portion uh, indicative of the stockyard, the hundred something million dollars to do the forest inventory. We went to the, to the CET, we got the CET. The people were stunned that we got it so fast from January 1, it moving from 5% to 5% on all pine wood products. The, um, the, the, the Minister of Natural Resources put in the restrictions, stepping in from force. Everything they asked for, we got. And then we got yeah. a brush aside. Yeah. When asked to comment on the budget, hey, these people, you know, it's as if we did nothing. You know, they're going through something they say they give me. I don't know what they gave, gave me. We sat on the wrong table, look on the rebels there. Is there on what was the party the wrong table? We sat there, we went to, we said the next sector is going to be agri processing. And yet we not asking for we not asking for laudable kudos. All we asking is to give the public the right impression. We're not asking you for tell you we we great on our kind of story. The achievement of the good life is a journey, not a distance. I said in the budget speech. The road is long with many a winding turn. Yes. But we will get there. Yes. We believe in the goodness of our people, their resourcefulness, creativity, and resilience. I urge the honorable members of the opposition to remove the blinkers from their eyes that are preventing them from seeing what this budget is. A people's budget steeped with something for everyone. A growth propelling budget whose premises and promises bode well for the hopes and aspirations of our people. I urge all our people to take advantage of all the measures in the budget. I urge especially our young people to seize the opportunities available under the various youth initiatives, the expanded public investment program, and the small business allocations to be their own boss, to build a better life for themselves, their families, and the nations.